Sunday after Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's first letter of Corinthians, chapter 15. Brethren, I make known unto you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, but which also you are saved, if you hold it fast, after what manner I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen by Cephas and then after by that after that by the eleven then he was seen by more than five hundred and the brethren at once of whom many remain until this present and some are fallen asleep after that he was seen by then by all the apostles and last of all he was seen also by me as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, <clears throat> who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his voice in me hath not been void. And then the Gospel, St. Mark, chapter 7. At that time Jesus, going out from the coast of Tyre, came by sight into the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of the Capitals. And they bring to him one deaf and dumb, and they besought him that he would lay his hand upon him. And taking him from the multitude apart, he put his fingers into his ears, and spitting he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he groaned and said to him, Ephetah, which is, Be thou opened. And immediately his ears were opened. And then the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke right. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal did they publish it, and so much the more did they wonder, saying, He hath done all things well, yet may both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Those are the words of today's holy God. Amen. Here we find that the big considerations in the middle of the battlefield, the season of, that, of Pentecost. St. Paul, the warrior, he says, I make known unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast, at what manner I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I live unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins, and so on. <clears throat> and here I remember that with regard to our holy gospel, that the gospel never changes. The word gospel means the good news, the good news of what happened in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for our sins, and that he, he, he came to bring us the sacred truth. And St. Paul received that truth from, from our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he says, I am teaching you what I have also received, and that we're going to hand down what I have received. Let's we'll get the word tradition. Tradidi quotidacepi, he says it in multiple ways in the sacred scripture. But I have handed down to you what I have received. And what I receive, I hand down. And what is hand down? We hand down to the next generation, hand down to the next generation, hand down to the next generation, until the end of the world. And then it's never going to change. But also, what does this gospel do? And there are several points here in the sacred uh, epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians against the error of the Protestants. Where they, where they, that they have here that what does the gospel do? I, that uh, the, the gospel is that in which we stand. I preach you which you also receive, and wherein you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold it fast. As Martin Luther and many modern men, they say that as long as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, as long as you believe in the faith, as long as you believe you're a good person, you can do whatever you want. But St. Paul says, I have preached you a scripture, which is a writing of what happened in real history, that Jesus Christ really came to this earth, God the Son came to this earth, the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he died on the cross for our sins, and he made, he said, I, he, I have come to build this kingdom of Christ, to fulfill all the scriptures. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters. And that we must believe what Christ taught, but we must stand in what he taught. And we must hold fast to it in the manner that we have been told to hold fast to it. So the holy scripture and the holy faith, and it must be by that which we stand. 
We can't just say that we believe. Remember that Martin Luther said that believe boldly, but sin, sin boldly, but believe more boldly, is what Saint, as Martin Luther, the evil one, said. And the fact is that we know we must stand in the gospel. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us that gospel. So that when, when Saint Dismas, very late, came to the gospel, when our Lord Jesus Christ is on the cross, and he himself is on the cross, and he is being punished for the just reward of his crimes, what did he do? He did all the things necessary to be saved. And he said, he first of all, he chastised his fellow neighbor, who was also on the cross with him, Gesmas, the wicked thief. And St. Dismas said, we, we suffer the just reward of our crimes. Do not blaspheme this man. And when he said these things, he was in the state of, a, of, of great pain himself. He was being justly condemned for his crimes. And he had to speak clearly the truth, not just about Jesus Christ. He had to speak the truth about himself. So that St. Dismas said, this man has done no wrong. This man is innocent who is on the central cross. But I, Dismas, I have done wrong. And you, Gesmas, you have done wrong. And we are all sinners, except for this man on the central cross. That <clears throat> This man has done no wrong, but we have done wrong. And, and that we suffer the just reward of our crimes. I am not bitter about hanging upon a cross. I'm not angry that I'm hanging on a cross because I know that I deserve to be crucified for my sins. Because it was a murderer, he was a thief, and he was rightly and justly punished for his crimes. He was not like a modern man. My bishop Sheen says, when a man, a normal man, faces death, he does one of two things. He either protests his innocence because he doesn't want people to know that he is a criminal, but if he's a just man, he, he, he admits that he is a sinner, and he asks forgiveness. And this is what the wise and just man does. So that Dismas, he is not foolish enough to, press, to protest his innocence like modern man does. He, say, he looks at the central cross, and he says, this man has done no wrong, but I have, and I suffer the just reward for my crimes, and I must do penance for my crimes, and I must be sorry for my crimes. All things Martin Luther doesn't believe. And Martin Luther rejects. And then he speaks to Jesus Christ, and he reminds, and he professes his personal faith in Jesus Christ. So he says, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And it's very important that he speaks of the kingdom, because the Jesus Christ, his own apostles don't believe in the kingdom anymore. And the, his enemies don't believe the kingdom, is, they believe the kingdom is wiped out. But St. Dismas, who is a thief, who just met Jesus Christ for the first time on this Good Friday, and met him in rather difficult and ab uh, circumstances, what does he recognize? This man is a king. And that woman that stands at the foot of the cross, the one they could see, she is the queen of queens, and she is the mother of God, the mother of this great king. And he saw her, and he saw him. And he recognized there is a kingdom here, there is a war going on. This is a soldier, and he is on this cross because he chooses to be on the cross. And that crown of thorns, which was put on him as a mockery by the enemies of God, it is a crown of a king. And the normal crown of a king falls off very easily. But this king, this crown shall not fall off. This crown shall remain. And he is a very wise man. He has the wisdom of Rahab. Remember that Rahab, a thousand years before, more than a thousand years before. Rahab was there in the, in the walls of Jericho, and she saw the spies come in. And she saw the weak ragtag army of, of Joshua. And he said, this army cannot defeat our army. This army cannot conquer our walls. But Rahab recognized, though she was a woman of impurity, she was a prostitute, but she recognized these people are of God. And the people inside this city are not of God. And the people of God shall destroy the people who are not of God. Because God is more powerful than these walls. And God is more powerful than our king. And therefore, I will not make a bargain with my king. I will make a bargain with a king outside these walls of pride. I will make a bargain with the king of, their, of, 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 this, of this people of Joshua. And therefore, he said, she said to the three spies, I know that your God is God. And I know that you shall destroy our city. 
And Rahab had the same spirit of St. Dismas in the same kind of circumstances. Dismas appeared as though that he was in the time of the church where it's not a good day to become a Catholic. We say to people nowadays, what church do you send them to? Where do you send them to go to Mass? What do you tell them you've got to become a Catholic? Well, this the, the priests and bishops who are living in scandal. They're teaching error and heresy. The church is looking crazy on all sides. How do you explain to people to be Catholics? Dismas went all through that. Dismas went beyond all of that, as, as Rahab did many years before. And Rahab was a great-great-grandmother of that man on the cross. And Rahab was a great-great-grandmother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And somehow the spirit of Rahab and the heart of Rahab jumped out of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all of our Lord Jesus Christ and reached into the heart of that thief. And he said, if Rahab could make a deal before a war, if Rahab could make a deal in the time of the greatest fight and make a deal with the right God and not with the wrong God, I can make a deal. And therefore he made a deal. And he said, at the time of the battle, I believe. He did not say, I believe, like the Protestants. He stood fast in his belief. He was a brand new Catholic. He was brand new to the faith. He, that morning, he cursed God. At 12 noon, he cursed God. At 1 in the afternoon, he cursed God. But between 1 and 3, he received the Holy Roman Catholic faith. And between 1 and 3, he made a deal with God. And he made sure that the, that the faith that he was going to receive coming from Jesus Christ upon the central cross is going to enter inside of him. And therefore he said, uh, this man has done no wrong. And he confessed publicly. I have done wrong. And he confessed publicly. And he, I suffered justly the sufferings that I experienced upon this cross because I am a criminal. And he spoke honestly. And then he spoke to Christ. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And then our Lord returned the promise, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now consider the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we mentioned multiple times. Consider the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ when he hangs upon the cross. His own apostles don't believe. And the, the, the enemies are, re, are rejoicing over him. And he is in the greatest of agony. He and the mother of sorrows are in the greatest of agony. And imagine how that touched his heart when a thief, could see through all of the blood, could see through all the nails, could see through the crown of the thorns and the scourging, could see through the weakness of the apostles, and could see that this mother is queen, and that man is king, and he is about, he's a king who's about to win. He is not a king on the verge of defeat. He is a king on the verge of victory. And we, that's why he said, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And don't let me be forgotten. And therefore Christ spoke boldly to, our, to the good thief and said to St. Dismas, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now how did he get to paradise? It was not because he just said, I believe. He did not have an empty faith. He, had, he followed the rule of St. Paul, which he says in the epistle today, that what is this faith that, that the Dismas had? That I make known to you gospel which I preach to you which you also have received and wherein you stand. You stand in this gospel by which gospel you are saved if you hold fast after what manner I preach unto you unless you have believed in vain. So many souls believe Jesus is God. So many souls believe the true faith but they believe in vain because they don't believe in the battle. They don't believe when there's blood on the cross. They don't believe when the arrows are flying. We are now in such a time in which we must have the faith of St. Dismas and the faith that St. Paul speaks of in the epistle today. We need the faith of St. Dismas and the faith that St. Paul speaks of. That's the faith we need right now. We are in a great fight and we must have the faith that in this fight, while the enemy is trying to destroy our church and it looks like he's succeeding, he shall fail. Not only shall the enemy, Satan, fail, and all his cohorts fail, but they are so close to utter collapse. And our king is so close to total victory. And his mother is going to be the one who's going to bring about that victory this time, as is prophesied many times in the history of our church, that she shall crush the head of the serpent, and he's, she's going to crush the head very soon. And therefore, let's have confidence in her crushing. And the faith that we must have is the faith that we stand by, 
the faith that we carry in the manner in which St. Paul preaches. Let not our faith be in vain. And then also St. Paul points out his own case. I persecuted the church of God, he says. I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But does this mean I'm not an apostle? No, I am an apostle. Because while I was on my way to persecute the church of God, I was knocked off a horse. And God said to me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who is it, Lord? I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. What am I to do? He didn't want to reach or convert, but St. Paul. The Lord said to him, it's hard to kick against the goad. You shall not resist my grace. And then three days later, his blindness was cured. Three years later, he came out of the desert after spending three years with Christ. And he was the greatest of the apostles to go out. And he says, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am not worthy to be a priest, says St. Paul. I'm not worthy to be an apostle. I'm not worthy to be a bishop. I'm not worthy to write these epistles. Am I going to cry about it? No. I show the grace of God is not void in me, and by the grace of God I am what I am. And when he got to the end of his days, what did he say? There is laid up for me a crown in heaven. And he was teaching us that when we work for Christ, when we have faith and stand upon that faith, and we have it in the manner in which St. Paul taught it, in the manner in which Christ gave it to us, when we have this faith in the manner in which he taught us, the manner in which he gave us in the time of the battle, there shall be perseverance in the battle, there shall be victory, and there shall be a reward. And therefore we say with St. Dismas and with St. Paul, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. And we know that when we confess Christ in the time of battle, in the time when the world despises him, and does not know, love, and serve him, and is very much against him, and appears to have its victory, when we confess Christ in this time, there is going to be given a special reward. And so pray to the Lord of the harvest, that there be young men who come into the harvest to be priests, young ladies who come to the harvest to be sisters and nuns, to give their life to Christ in this time, in which is such a great need, because the harvest indeed is great. The trouble as the laborers with faith who are going to stand fast as St. Paul asked and demanded, they are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that the laborers be many, and they come to the harvest, for the harvest of the victory of Mary is about to come, and it will be very great. Those of you all in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.